Greetings and welcome to this edition of Positronic Hypersonic. I'm Barry P. Cook. I'm here to review the latest episode of Stargirl. It was called The Blackmail. And as it begins, we see that Sylvester is on his way to the diner, where he talks to Yolanda about how he can't figure out what the heck to do with all this time. Because in Blue Valley, things are kind of tepid, to say the least. There isn't, like, danger around every corner, so what's he going to do? And through their conversation, he realizes that what he can do is find some kind of work, find a job. Next, we find Courtney and Pat spitballing about, you know, who could possibly have killed the gambler over breakfast. And Sportsmaster and his wife burst in to replace the family's waffle and egg-based breakfast with some kind of crazy thing that I guess they consume. They've done this a couple times during this season. I guess they're kind of sporty people, so they don't eat carbs and they don't eat sugary juices and things like that. So they keep showing up with different products. Anyway, the family, of course, is not too pleased about this. Cindy sends Beth a bunch of files from the gambler's computer anonymously. And the files make it clear that Gambler was blackmailing someone, but it's not immediately apparent who that was. At school, Cameron gives Courtney the cold shoulder when she says hi to him. Artemis's mom visits Barbara again because she's still having trouble figuring out how to fit in with the parent groups. And apparently they want her to make a speech at some kind of civic event. And she doesn't know what to do. So she's looking to Barbara for help. It turns out that the people the gambler was blackmailing were, in fact, the Crocs. And that's why they said at the end of last week's episode, it's only a matter of time before they find out. This, of course, makes them prime suspects in his murder. We see Cameron again, and apparently something's eating at him, as we've kind of noticed, because he hasn't been turning in assignments at school, and he's not doing his painting work in his other class. He ends up having a confrontation, in fact, with Our Man after Our Man catches him being kind of a jerk to a teacher that was just trying to help him. And then in the parking lot, Cameron puts an ice pick through one of the tires on a car that I was thinking might be Our Man's, but that's never confirmed. Cindy turns up at Courtney's house looking for Courtney, but ends up telling Sylvester about how the Crocs were the ones being blackmailed by the gambler and, you know, kind of lords it over him that she knows that and he doesn't. They didn't, you know, because nobody told him. And when she suggests that they go after the Crocs together, he gives her kind of a, a dressing down, a pretty hard dressing down about how she's just the daughter of a massive villain and he doesn't want anything to do with her. And he slams the door in her face. After which he goes out to get the Crocs himself, which we can kind of suspect was Cindy's whole plan to get him going and get him, um, you know, get him to go after the Crocs. Sylvester does, in fact, confront the Crocs in the grocery store, and it doesn't go well because a crazy fight breaks out in the store. And it was a pretty cool fight. You know, he's blasting the staff at them, and there was, you know, some jumping over shelves and things exploding and some fisticuffs, kind of like, you know, hand-to-hand -hand stuff. So it was a pretty good scene. It only comes to an end when Pat shows up in the giant robot and makes Sylvester stand down. And this after he exploded a couple of cars in the parking lot. So it spilled out into the parking lot, actually, and he even blew up a couple of cars. It was it was really gnarly. Anyway, it turns out that the gambler was blackmailing the Crocs over old crimes committed by other members of the ISA and not them. But he ended up refunding the Crocs all their money after a while and let them off the hook. So it looks like he really was trying to go straight. It looked, you know, maybe like, okay, his going straight thing was just a ruse and here he was blackmailing people but it turns out that the blackmailing was before he decided to stop being a villain and when he made the decision he refunded their money and let them off the hook so it looks like he really was trying to go straight which is cool i mean it's unfortunate that he died but anyway the crocs insist they didn't do it he had let them off the hook and they you know thought he might be toying with them but ultimately decided to leave it alone and they didn't kill him, which we know they didn't because we saw Sportsmaster visit him and then leave on the night that he was killed while he was still alive. <laughs> when Sylvester gets back, he argues with Pat about Sylvester's behavior. Pat and Sylvester argue about Sylvester's behavior and talk about how Sylvester has to be better and to be an example to Courtney and the other kids. But for a moment, Sylvester was really heated at Pat for, you know, making him stand down and everything. Cindy comes clean to the rest of the JSA about how she went to Sylvester and she explains that it was because 
she wanted to prove herself, which is kind of what I thought, actually, that she figured she could, you know, either take care of the Crocs with him or get him to take care of the Crocs and sort of prove that she's on the right side, but it wasn't the right move. So Courtney tells her that if she pulls a stunt like that again, she'll be off the team. And Cindy acknowledges that, you know, yeah, that's, that's what the consequence would be. Artemis's mom struggles to give a speech that she's been asked to give, as I mentioned earlier, when it comes time for the speech. And, but when she sees that Barbara is there to support her, she feels better and she's able to give the speech. Cameron approaches Courtney and apologizes for being aloof. And they talk about going on a walk together if he wants, which they do. But then he kind of ends the walk abruptly and leaves. And it was a little weird. So he's clearly going through something. Artemis's mom pays a visit to Barbara's jerkish boss, who had given Barbara a hard time earlier, and intimidates him so that he'll treat Barbara better. Pat gets to work on a costume for Sylvester, because one thing that came up in their conversation was that maybe he could start, you know, trying to see himself as an example to the other kids if he had a costume. Sylvester grabs a flashlight and goes to investigate the crime scene, the scene where the gambler was murdered. And once he's there, he's snatched up and tossed around by some kind of really big entity that we couldn't really see. I was wondering if maybe it was Solomon Grundy, but because it growls and everything, but we don't see, so we don't know. And as far as we know, Solomon Grundy is still buried and not walking about. So I don't know. We'll have to see what's going on there. Certainly, this entity could have trashed the gambler's trailer and killed him. So maybe this is the thing that we're looking for, you know, in terms of who's responsible for the murder even. So we'll have to see as the season progresses. I thought this was a decent episode. You know, this show isn't like a thrill a minute kind of show and it's not the greatest show ever made, but it's a cute little show. And I think, you know, it's dealing with some stuff that I tend to like in my shows like Redemption Stories. And there was the one cool fight. And, you know, I think the show does have heart. So I continue to enjoy watching it. I'm still not convinced that Sylvester is all the way right, that there's not something wrong with him, seeing as he's come back from the dead, you know? I think because he gets, he seems to get a little bit too much joy out of like kicking other people's asses, kind of like a sadistic joy out of it. And he seems to sort of have a, bit of a reckless streak where he doesn't care about like collateral damage and stuff and I don't know if that's supposed to be just normal star man or what but like I wouldn't be surprised if it comes out that having died and come back kind of messed him up a little bit and he's a little bit off so we'll have to see but yeah a decent episode I think the kids all do a good job in their parts and that's really it I'll be back with a review of the next episode but before I go, I want to remind you about my Teespring store. I have shirts and other merch there with the channel logo and other designs that are available. And, you know, it would really help out the channel if you guys were to order some merch. The link is in the description. But I'm going to get out of here for now. Until I return, I wish you peace and long life.